I like Common Cause a lot, you know. Uh, this is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. It's the five o'clock block today on a Thursday. And uh, we're talking about community matters in the larger community, if you will, with Sandy Ma. She's the executive director of Common Cause Hawaii. Hi, Sandy. Hi. Hi, Jay. Thanks for having Common Cause Hawaii on your show. We're Thank happy you. to be here. Thank you for coming around. Today, we're going to talk about Common Cause and how it is weighing in on voting. Um, but first, I have to ask Alexa a question. All ready? All righty. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Alexa, what is Common Cause? According to Wikipedia, Common Cause is a watchdog group based in Washington, D.C., with chapters in 35 states. It was founded in 1970 by John W. Gardner, a Republican, who was the former Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare in the administration of President Lyndon Johnson, as well as chair of the National Urban Coalition, an advocacy group for minorities and the working poor in urban areas. That's helpful. Do you agree with it? Yes. Alexa got it right. Um, <laughs> John Gardner founded Common Cause in 1970 uh, when uh, he noticed that there were a lot of special interests getting into Congress and lobbying on behalf of, uh, of uh, corporations. And there was not an organization lobbying on behalf of the people. So Common Cause was founded as a people's lobbying organization. So we lobby on behalf of the people's interests. Uh, so we are really a people's lobbying organization. We um, work for um, uh, public accountability in our government, holding power accountable, ethics reform, um, campaign finance reform, uh, voting rights, um, a whole host of issues uh, to make sure that our government is responsive to the people and responsible to the people. What I find interesting about the Alexa you know, statement of it is that Gardner was a Republican. And it just points out how much the Republican Party has changed from then till now. It's like another world. And, and looking back, you know, you, you have that, it's, I wouldn't call it deja vu, it's the reverse of deja vu is what it is. Anyway, let's, let's talk about the bill that's pending in the Hawaii legislature. Let's call it SB 159. It's a voting rights bill and Common Cause has supported that bill. Um, can you talk about the bill and Common Cause? Why is Common Cause supporting it? Uh, well, thank you, Jay. Um, I, I like to go back to your first point um, about uh, Republicans and, and John Garner. Uh, I just want to clear up that uh, Common Cause is a nonpartisan organization. Uh, we uh, don't uh, uh, support uh, Republicans or Democrats or um, uh, any party uh, for that matter. We uh, support good uh, uh, government uh, regulations and um, good government watchdog issues. So that's that's our mission. And I focus in Hawaii on the state government. And so SB 159 is automatic voter registration. And that is moving through the state legislature. It was introduced in the Hawaii State Senate and now has crossed over and is in the House. Uh, it was heard today. We're really happy. Uh, it was heard in Hawaii uh, House Judiciary and Hawaiian Affairs Committee. And it has uh, passed through with some amendments. Um, and uh, for the most part, we're, we're uh, OK with those amendments. And it should next be heard in the Hawaii Finance Committee. Um, so that is automatic voter registration, SB 159. And what automatic voter registration means, and um, I think there's a lot of confusion about that. Uh, what it means is um, if you interact with the Department of Motor Vehicles, you will be asked uh, about uh, voter registration and you will be asked whether you want to register to vote or not. And if you want to register to vote, you will have the opportunity to register to vote at the Department of Motor Vehicles. When you get a state ID, when you get a driver's license or update your state ID or update your driver's license, that's when you move, you get married, um, you get a new ID or driver's license. And so usually um, uh, the, when you go interact with the DMV, you have to fill out a new form uh, to uh, register to vote. And then that form is hand carried down to the elections office and then rekeyed in. And with automatic voter registration, uh, the data will just be 
be electronically automated transferred to the Office of Elections. It won't be hand carried and we keyed in. So you don't have to fill out any more information by hand. And that's why it's a good uh, bill, a good law for us to have in Hawaii. It saves on uh, bureaucratic inefficiencies. Why have someone else key in the same information at the Office of Elections, have duplicate um, people doing the same job? Um, it could have um, data entry issues. There's always concerns about, you know, uh, eliminating bureaucratic inefficiencies and it would save money that way. And also it's just electronic transfer of data. It saves money, it saves time. What automatic uh, voter registration does not do is require people to register to vote. And so there's a lot of confusion. It doesn't require people to register to vote. And also if you already have a state ID or a driver's license, like I already have mine, um, I don't need to get mine renewed. Um, anytime soon. So if I'm just walking around and the bill passes and becomes law, uh, for if, for example, just take, for example, I am not registered to vote, it does not automatically make me a registered voter. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's not what it means. You still have to interact with mm -hmm. uh, the DMV. Um, and so this is a good thing. Um, uh, it saves money. It saves people time. Um, it just, uh, it, it just allows people uh, a, an easier way to register to vote instead of having to remember to register to vote um, when the time comes for them. Okay, so it's not it's not really automatic. It's, it's only automatic when you check the box. Um, it's not. I wouldn't call it automatic in, in that regard. Uh, and aside from the driver's license uh, engagement, is there any other engagement? Um, did you mention any others where? Um, you have the opportunity to check the box and, and therefore it, it gets to be um, automated that way? So it's um, automatic or automated in terms of the electronic transfer of data between the DMV and the Office of Elections. It's only about licenses though. It's only about licenses, yes. In other states, um, the, uh, they have expanded it to social service offices. If you interact with a social service office, you can update um, your information there or apply for um, social services and you can register to vote. Um, but for Hawaii under SB 159, it is just at the Department of Motor Vehicles. Mm -hmm. okay. You are correct. Yeah. <clears throat> so who, who, who introduced this uh, anyway? SB 159 was introduced by Senator Chris Lee. Uh, yes. And, uh, Good for him. Yes. Um, this uh, bill, um, um, automatic voter registration has been introduced um, in previous legislative sessions. So the idea has been around for a number of years in the state legislature. Um, it's been adopted in um, uh, about 20, over 20 states across the country and in Washington excuse me, in Washington, D.C., yes. Hmm. So um, you mentioned there are some amendments that uh, uh, were attached to the bill today at the hearing at 2 o'clock. What, what, what were those amendments? Uh, that's a great question. So one of the amendments um, is uh, uh, kind of interesting. Originally, uh, the bill as drafted, um, SB 159, it was an opt-out bill. So you are, when you interact with the DMV, um, are registered to vote um, unless you opt out, unless you check a box opting out of being a registered voter. Of course, all the information uh, you provide um, at the DMV will show that you are um, a citizen, that you are 18 years of age, um, that you are a resident of the state of Hawaii. Um, and then if you decide to, uh, that you will attest to being a registered voter, um, and then unless you want to opt out, then you will opt out of being a registered voter. So that was the original bill. Um, there were some concerns by um, some legislators that uh, people may not know that they were being a registered voter uh, if they were opted out. And so they thought that an opt-in version of AVR would be more um, would be uh, 
better for uh, the public so that the public would be more informed that they were uh, actually choosing to be a registered voter. Uh, so um, that was one of the amendments that was made to have it be um, uh, uh, opt-in, like uh, if you're interacting with the DMV, a person will opt in to be a registered voter and then start saying that, yes, um, I am a citizen, I am 18 years of age, I'm a resident of Hawaii, and I attest to that. Um, uh, are there other states which have it the other way around? Yes. That is, there, which say that you have to opt out instead? Yes, there are states. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I, how, you know, how many states have, have this kind of legislation? Um, is this popular around the country? Oh, yes. Um, AVR um, was first adopted in Oregon in 2015 and enacted in uh, the next year in 2016. Uh, and since that time, uh, like I said, over 20 states in Washington, D.C. have AVR. And really, and it's not just blue states, it's red states. Uh, for example, Alaska, Utah um, have AVR, West Virginia has AVR, and it's because it's cost savings. It's a lot of cost savings. You're not duplicating services. Have, have any states repealed the, this, this, uh, this, this legislation? Um, a lot of states are looking at repealing AVR. One of the most uh, notable states looking at repealing AVR is Georgia. Uh, Georgia has uh, AVR and Georgia is looking to repeal AVR. I do believe that that effort is failing. Uh, Georgia's um, state uh, legislative process is ending very shortly. And I do believe that the effort to repeal AVR um, is, is not going to succeed. But um, I, I don't want to speak out of turn. I no, no, well, it, 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 it just that, that's adequate for us to understand. Uh, so the other thing is, um, you know, Common Cause was perfectly happy to have it as an opt out provision, um, but that switched today. If you ask me, Sandy, I would I would have it the original way as an opt out because I would want to encourage people to vote and I don't see any damage to anyone uh, if you make him a voter and even if he doesn't fully understand he is a voter because we want to achieve as many voters and vote votes if you will we want to have as many people vote as possible Hawaii has a uh, low voting rate, and uh, we want to do every right. And so um, Common Cause was interested in, in the first model. Um, you say you agree with the second model. What would be your preference, though? Um, thank you for that question. We support AVR. You are absolutely correct. We would have really liked an opt-out model, um, but we understand uh, that an opt-in model will also help Hawaii because in the end, it will update our voter rolls. And with vote by mail, we really need um, accurate voter rolls so that when the ballots get sent to voters, they get sent to the correct current addresses. Mm -hmm. And January, excuse me, in February of 2020, before the August primary and before the November elections, the Office of Elections estimated there were about 100,000 outdated addresses on the voter rolls. And the 100,000 outdated addresses, uh, that was out of about 750,000 registered voters. And so that is quite a huge amount. Um, and that is not due to any uh, fault of our elections officials. Um, they did an incredible job with the 2020 elections. It's just that people, when they move, don't really think we need to update our voter rolls, um, people uh, or re voter registration addresses. Um, people think, hey, if we just fill out um, uh, address forwarding, the ballot will follow us. That cannot happen. Under the law, you cannot have the ballot uh, be forwarded if you have um, address forwarding. And people mm. just didn't understand mm. that. Important with they the know that. That's very yeah. important. Yes. Otherwise, you tend to lose your vote. So yes. what about the, the political party thing? You know, we were talking about that in a minute ago. Um, so if, if I if I register to vote somewhere along the line, I have to tell what my party is because that, I, you know, no, that not I, don't, I never have to say. 
Okay, no, so not... this form that I'm filling out with the DMV, it doesn't ask me anything about my political party. Right? No, not in Hawaii. In Hawaii, we do not disclose our political party when we register to vote. Um, if you want to uh, register with a party, uh, Green, Libertarian, um, there's the new Aloha Aina party, uh, uh, Democrat, Republican, you, you register with the with the parties themselves. You don't tell the state. Okay. So is, is anybody opposing this bill as it stands? Um, we had um, today about uh, over 50 pieces of testimony submitted from organizations and from individuals and from state agencies. And really, uh, no one opposed the bill, not even uh, state agencies who will have to implement it, like uh, uh, Department of Transportation through the DMV. Um, there, there were some suggested amendments, uh, you know, technical little things, but no one really opposed the bill. There were just like maybe, I, I believe, one or two individuals, um, but yeah. you, know, you, okay, you can't so have 100 you mentioned, you mentioned that it had to go still um, through the House Finance Committee. Yes. Um, is it a money bill? Is, is this call for any expenditures by the state of Hawaii? No, that's a fantastic question. There are um, no uh, appropriations uh, requested in this bill in SB 159, no. Hmm. Okay. Um, did, I, did I catch all the amendments or are there other amendments that happened today? Uh, there were some uh, little uh, more amendments um, regarding address confidentiality that the uh, State Department of Transportation uh, thought it was better uh, left uh, in other means. Um, and a couple other amendments that I, um, I wasn't uh, quite sure I wanted to see um, the final paperwork that came out, the House draft one that came out of the committee. I don't want to speak out of turn. I, I was taking notes, but I wasn't quite sure I caught all the page numbers and all the line items that were being addressed. No, nothing, nothing substantive, though. It sounds very technical to me. It's, it was technical. It was very technical. Yes. Yeah. So the, the bill is likely to pass. Um, I, I don't <laughs> I don't want to jinx myself. I, I'm really hoping it will I'm really, really hoping uh, because it looks different. Uh, it will still have to go through House Finance, and then after House Finance, knock on wood, it will still um, have to be reconciled uh, with the Senate because it's different from the Senate version. Mm -hmm. um, conference committee. Exactly. exactly. Nobody, nobody ever knows what's going to happen in conference committee. <laughs> maybe, maybe you do, Jay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know anybody who knows. <laughs> Well, I, I hope it passes because, you know, we have to make a statement uh, in, in these times of controversy over voting. Uh, and it, it occurs to me that maybe there are people out there that are also introducing bills, um, as in 40 some odd states in the mainland, uh, that, that tend to suppress voting uh, or, 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 you know, clean people off the, the, the registration list. Is, is anybody doing that here in Hawaii? Um, trying to suppress the vote in Hawaii. Yeah, are there um, any bills? I, anybody introducing I, bills like that? I haven't seen that. And so I really applaud our legislators uh, for understanding um, that people's voice matters, people's voice at the polls matter. Um, and, I, and I really hope that AVR passes because easing barriers uh, to uh, registering to vote is the first step to getting people to the vote. And there was an incredibly powerful um, testimony today at the hearing for SB 159 um, by, a, by a person who provided services for the house list. Uh, and this was to tr transition people into um, uh, semi-permanent um, housing. And she was saying that uh, it is so important for people uh, when they are transitioned to uh, transitional shelters to be able to get IDs because when you are um, houseless and homeless, you don't have IDs anymore. And so when you have transitional shelters, one of the first things you do is to get an ID. And when you get an ID, you wanna be able to register to vote and that is how you do it. Um, and we think about uh, people who, um, uh, who you know are lucky uh, who have you know permanent addresses who have internet and uh, broadband who can 
have a stable address and have the ballot mailed to us, but not everyone lives like us. And so we really have to make sure that the democratic process, democracy um, covers people who um, are not as fortunate. And so that's why AVR is so important. The houseless community um, um, can really benefit um, and can have a voice. Uh, so um, we, we have to do everything we can to enable pe people to vote. It's more important now. It's, it's a more high profile issue now, which takes me to the fact that if, if I look at your Common Cause website, that's commoncause.com. Uh, .com, um, uh, there's, there's two there's two common cause um, entities. One is the one that lobbies, and the other is the one that is an educational foundation. If you give to the educational foundation, you get a tax deduction. If you give to the one that lobbies, you don't. Um, anyway, what, uh, and of course they cross over in, in substance. So the question I, I put, you know, if you if you look at the common cause website, you see lots of initiatives nationally about voting. You know, um, it's not just um, uh, issues like uh, automatic voting registration. It's uh, lots of issues about getting people to vote. And um, I, want, I want to spend a little time with you about uh, what, what Common Cause does to increase the number of people who vote, what it does here in Hawaii, what you're doing, and what it does nationally. So for um, Hawaii, we uh, supported vote by mail and uh, we worked with a co number of coalition partners to pass uh, vote by mail. And we were really lucky we did that uh, prior to the pandemic. And when vote by mail passed, uh, we uh, did a lot of public education and outreach to inform the public about uh, the vote by mail process um, uh, and to educate people about the vote by mail deadlines. Uh, when you receive your ballot, uh, don't throw it away <laughs> um, and you have time to uh, fill out the ballot and turn it back where the drop boxes are, where the voter service centers are. Um, and if you don't receive your ballot, uh, that you can still go in person to, um, to uh, vote in person at a voter service centers. And so we did a lot of public outreach. We did a lot of webinars with um, our coalition partners we um, contact a lot of individuals. So that is our public outreach, public education component of uh, what we did to make sure that people were able to vote, knew how to vote because it was a new process. And our vote by mail process um, was 100% all in, all at once. We didn't have a pilot. We didn't do county by county. So um, well, that was something we did. Okay, anyway, I wanna to move to the other thing. And for that, I wanna ask, uh... Uh, Alexa, another question. Alexa, what is voter suppression? Alexa, what is voter suppression? According to Wikipedia, voter suppression is a strategy used to influence the outcome of an election by discouraging or preventing specific groups of people from voting. It is distinguished from political campaigning in that campaigning attempts to change likely voting behavior by changing the opinions of potential voters through persuasion and organization, activating otherwise inactive voters, or registering new supporters. That seems like a pretty good definition. They're catching modern times when they define it that way. Alexa so, is right again. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to I ask you you know, what Common Cause is doing about voter suppression, which is taking place in more than 40 states, and it's a, sort of a shameless racist attempt to uh, limit, limit, you know, a lot of people from voting. Uh, and this is, this is very troubling. It would seem to be against your, your basic mission, your basic charter. Um, so what is Common Cause doing about that? What is Common Cause doing about um, getting the John Lewis Voting Rights Act passed in Congress? So um, thank you again. So on a national level, we are definitely supporting um, expansion of the voting, um, uh, uh, trying to stop the rollback of, um, of, of voting rights um, uh, nationally. Uh, we are very supportive of uh, House Resolution 1 for the People Act. Uh, we are actively uh, asking our members to call um, 
uh, congressional representatives uh, to support HR1. It is being heard in the Senate. And so we, we really are trying to, uh, given that the Senate is tied 50-50, we really are trying to uh, uh, have a, a lot of support for HR1, the For the People Act. For the People, ha for the People Act has a lot of pro-voter policies. Uh, it expands automatic voter registration, like we talked about. It has a two-week early voting uh, period um, because, as we have seen, there's been a lot of um, uh, legislation introduced at the state level to reduce early voting, which harms uh, working people um, and harms minorities. And so we are um, trying to push for um, for the People Act, which exp expands uh, early voting in all 50 states. It would increase uh, vote by mail, um, which of course we have in Hawaii, but a lot of states are repealing vote by mail. And so that is what we are doing with for the People Act. You know, but it seems it's futile these days, doesn't it? If you have uh, um, the the cloture rule and the filibuster rule in place, um, you're never going to get enough votes in the Senate to pass it with those with those rules, and it won't pass. Therefore, it seems to me that if you want to get it passed, you need to you need to a you need to lobby Republicans, which is a a hard case. They they seem to be very, you know, lockstep about this. Um, and, um, and, and, and well, the alternative is to just get rid of the filibuster or cloture or modify it so that, um, you know, so that this bill would pass. Uh, I guess, you know, uh, that's, that's got to be part of the campaign, isn't it? It's got to be part of the campaign. What is, what is Common Cause doing or thinking about that? We, we do support um, eliminating the filibuster. We do. Uh, we've come out in support of eliminating the filibuster. Uh, we recognize that it is a relic of the Jim Crow era uh, to prevent uh, good legislation from passing. And so we do eliminate supporting the filibuster. Aren't you worried that if the Republicans, um, you know, win the majority uh, in both houses in 2022, which is a possibility, that they'll, you know, just um, repeal the Voting Rights Act immediately? Well, I think what we've seen uh, with the fight over um, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, is that if the people speak out, um, we can preserve the rights that we won. Mm -hmm. And what we've seen with that is uh, when the Republicans had control of all federal branches of government, uh, well, excuse me, Congress and the ex uh, executive, um, the people spoke out and said that they wanted to keep the Affordable Care Act. And and that was not repealed. Uh, there was a lot of effort uh, to pass legislation to repeal it, um, and and the people spoke out. Uh, and so, I, I think the people's voice needs to be heard, and that is Common Cause's uh, mission: is to allow that uh, to help people's voice to be heard, to teach people how to lobby their legislators, um, and give them means to do so. Yeah, very very important point. The other thing is that um, you know these these uh, bills that are being generated in various Republican legislatures with Republican governors around the country, quite a few of them, um, you know, are of questionable constitutionality as they stand. And um, that means a court fight. And uh, to the extent that some bills have passed already, been signed into law already, that are obviously voter suppression bills, um, various organizations have taken them to court. Uh, on that argument that they are in violation of the Constitution. Is Common Cause involved in, in litigation or in some initiative to try to point out that these bills should be struck by the courts? At this point, that's still um, in discussion. And so um, we haven't um, yet um, made a decision yet. Um, I am sure at the appropriate time, we will step in where necessary. Uh, as you probably know, we did file suit um, regarding um, the redistricting um, in, in North Carolina. So we do file suit when, when necessary. Um, Good. Good. I'm happy to hear that. I mean, and there's so many different ways that you can suppress uh, voters, so many different ways. And you've got to be so alert, vigilant, if the word, if it, if it please. Um, okay. One other thing I'd like to discuss is something you and I touched about just before the uh, 
show began, and that is why. Why do we care about avoiding voter suppression? Why do we care about the John Lewis bill? Um, what is so important? Aren't there other things that are more important right now than that? So um, we did talk about this and I'm so glad you brought it back. It's like full circle. Um, public participation, being engaged civically, talking to your legislators can result in tremendous change uh, people are worried about Black Lives Matter. People are worried about climate change. People are worried about having a, a living wage in Hawaii. People are worried about overdevelopment. And to effect positive change, to make sure that your concerns are heard, um, laws have to be changed. New laws have to be created. And because that is how our democracy works. And so how do, you, how do you have new laws made? How do you have old, bad laws changed or repealed? You have to talk to your legislators, you have to vote. And if you don't vote, you don't have a voice, you can't get these things corrected. Um, and so that's why it's so important, important to vote. It's so important to register and then vote. Uh, for people who say, oh, my one vote doesn't matter. Your one vote absolutely matters. Um, we've had um, races in Hawaii that have been decided by 20 um, votes or less. Um, and so if you think about that, your one vote makes a world of difference here. Um, and so um, it doesn't matter if we're all Democrats or all Republicans in the Hawaii State Legislature, um, there's shades of blue and there's shades of red. And so it, it's so important to be involved. And, um, and for those people who um, only vote when it's the presidential election, um, it starts at the bottom. Change starts at the bottom. And so um, it's all local, it's all local politics. So you just have to um, be involved. You have to know what's going on. Uh, you can't say, oh, it's just, you know, the same old, same old, and I don't care, and I'm not gonna, I'm not, it doesn't matter to me because it all matters. Um, and so. No, really well, I think it's very important because our democracy will not survive unless people can vote. It's, it's a core point. But I'd like to ask you about one other thought though. And I'll tell you my thought about it and see if you agree or you can shed light on what is happening out there. So if I write to my congressman, I'm just one person, true, as you said. But, uh, and, I, and, and when I vote, which is my best way of expressing my, my views on a given issue, voting for somebody who takes a position and all that, um, I get to do that every year, two, three, four, but not every day, not every day. Uh, so the, the question is whether in the 21st century um, there are other ways for me to express myself. And you've alluded to this. If I'm an engaged citizen and I like or dislike some particular position, um, what I can also do is I can address it to a corporation, a corporation who may be giving or arranging money to go to people running for office. Uh, and who can be sending lobbyists, you know, to Washington. And so, uh, and I can vote with that corporation every day. I can write them a letter every day and I can shop with them or not shop with them and put, pre I can invest in their stock or sell their stock. I can have an impact on corporations that in turn have an impact on our elected officials. Um, what do you think about that? Is that something that's coming into the fore? Is that something that Common Cause would encourage people to do? Um, that's uh, something really for, uh, for thought. And I encourage you to express yourself. Um, and I encourage everyone to express themselves in a way that they feel um, uh, shares their political principles is um, what I say. 
Um, if, if they feel like it uh, uh, mirrors their principles, if taking action uh, mirrors their principles, um, then they should. Um, whether or not common cause will encourage someone to shop at a particular location or not shop at a lo particular location or buy stock. Um, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting a, a particular location. I'm only, I'm only suggesting that it might be a good idea to tell people that they have this option, that's all. <laughs> No, I think you already did. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think there's more one than one way to skin a cat. And uh, I think that people have to be engaged every day. <laughs> You're absolutely right, definitely. I, yes. So uh, Sandy, uh, we don't get a chance to talk to uh, Common Cause very often. I'd like to talk to you more actually, because I really believe in what you're doing. And I wonder if you have a, any message, any takeaway you'd like to leave with our viewership right now. I do, and I, and I think I've, I've said this to other groups. Um, change takes time, and change takes um, steady, steady work. I think um, um, sometimes we feel like if we don't accomplish something in a week or two, then we just kind of give up and walk away. I don't think any of us should feel that way. Um, we have to keep at it. Um, and so it may seem kind of dark now, um, even though we just, um, um, especially in the last few days when um, what happened in Georgia with the killings of um, female um, Asian uh, people. Um, but change takes time and we can't give up and we have to be steady at it. And that's, that's really um, what I wanna say to people. Be steady, uh, don't lose focus. It does take time. Amen to that. And um, my compliments to Common Cause, I admire it very greatly, both on the local level and the national level, uh, doing important work. Thank you, Sandy Ma, Common Cause. Aloha. Thank you, Jay.